It's eight o'clock. Welcome to the Prophet Speak. It's so good to have you with us. We're going a few extra nights because we've got so much material that we want to share. And it's a real treat. One of my favorite prophetic ministries, a real mother to revive church. She really invests in our church and our ministry and into my life so much. Dr. Sharon Stone is going to share a message with us. And in fact, it's, it's about an hour long, so we've cut it into two. So we're doing a two-parter. We're going to hear the first half tonight and the second half tomorrow night and she's really going to speak. I mean this woman she prophesies like a machine gun. She just goes for it. So brace yourself, get a pad and a pen and get ready to write down what God's going to say to you. Okay so we're going to do about half an hour of Dr. Sharon Stone prophesying. She's an American lady but she's based in Windsor in the UK and has been here for many decades. I've known Sharon maybe 25 years something like that as she's lived in the UK so long and she really has helped transform the face of the prophetic in the United Kingdom. So listen up to this. Then, of course, we're going to go and listen to a song, some of the fresh creativity that's around at the moment. And I hope that really blesses you. And at the very end, I'll tell you about our global online learning community, The Tribe. And we currently have 50% off uh, membership. So uh, if you're interested in staying connected to us and getting into be part of our learning community, we'd love to tell you about that at the very end of the program. But here we go. Let's prepare and let's listen to Dr. Sharon Stone as she prophesies and brings the word of God. I believe that the spirit of God says that he does nothing except that he talks to his servants the prophets and this has been such an incredible time uh, I think I wake up in the morning and and uh, God is already speaking but the Lord is speaking about this right now God is talking about that there is protests that are getting ready to be amped up and released in the earth basically not only because of the shutdowns but because of economic pressure and I feel like it's going to be like an eruption and this is one of those prophetic words we don't want to see come to pass. And so I wanted to start at this point this morning so we could pray, we could intercede to halt this. Because I believe that there's cities all over the world, uh, some major cities, that this could happen in and be a negative. But we don't need anything else to deal with at time. We're here in England, but I believe one of those cities is London. I was raised in Los Angeles, so I believe Los Angeles is one of those cities. But I also believe we're talking about in Iran, we're talking about cities, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, cities in uh, uh, Israel, Tel Aviv. I believe that the Spirit of God, is, even Miami, I believe that the Spirit of God is wanting us to intercede. And a key scripture that the Lord has given me is Jeremiah 29 7. It says, Seek the welfare of the city where I've put you or where I've set you. It says, pray for their welfare, for in it you will have welfare. So can you join with me right now and as we prophetically pray? This is not one of those prophecies that we go, oh, I knew that. No, this is one of those prophecies that we say, God, we don't want this ever to come to pass. We believe you tell us some things beforehand that we might be able to bring a halting or a lessening uh, uh and that's what we seek to do. So we come before you, Lord, this morning, and we bring before you your precious Holy Scripture, Jeremiah 29, 29. And we come before you and we seek the welfare of these cities. And we pray for their welfare, knowing that in it that you said, as we sow into the kingdom, we reap as well first. And so, Father, right now we are sowing into the welfare, Father, of these protests and even on some level uh, the eruption of riots. And Father, right now we say, God, let the shutdown frustration and the economic pressure that is beginning to well up, Father, we speak a peace to, we speak a, a halting to, Father, we speak, Father, a, 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 a grace to, even now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I declare, Father, over this economic pressure right now, Father, we know the end result. You said this is going to be such a great economic blessing time in the earth. Father, we ask, Father, that you would put hope in men and women's hearts. And you notice that the cities that we mentioned are also types of inner cities. Those are often ones that already have economic pressures. Those are often ones that already have smaller housing and dwelling. And so the being in lockdown and being under greater economic uh, pressure 
or even being uh, with more people in a smaller place does add to the frustration. And I had a picture in my spirit the other day of uh, the these uh, cattle being hauled in a truck, probably to market or something. And they were so closely put in there that they began to fight one another. And I have never seen a cow f fight. You know, they're quite placid beings. We're not talking... Uh, talking about uh, bulls. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just say, in this quarantine, in this unprecedented time of forced confinement, Father, right now, where irritations would arise and where we think the problem is what's going on immediately right now God we lift our eyes up to you where our help comes from and we say God let hope be released to your people help and hope and that it comes from you in the mighty name of Jesus amen do not forget to pray for uh, those cities but also remember we're to be the hands of compassion so you be uh, if you have the opportunity and you're there in London, I'm speaking to the, those that are in my country, you'll have to do it in your own country. Uh, but, but go ahead, look for opportunities that you can build bridges, that you can be uh, the, the hands of compassion, that you can bring hope, that you can bring uh, um, a welfare. For, for three days last week, I was believing that the Spirit of God wanted me to call the police department because he wanted me to offer help for my city. And then I had a, a wonderful uh, man, uh, Wisdom, uh, that, that called me and said his wife was leading a program. Uh, is there anything we could do to help and be mobilized? Which we're going to, and we will let you know, so maybe that you could be a part as well. But one of the things I want you to know is, is this is not a time that you just say, okay, we're going to stay in here and stay in my house. Yes, we're in lockdown. But you know that you are coming in contact with people. You're talking to them on the phone. You're talking to them on the internet. You might be meeting uh, some even though you're staying your two meters apart. You know, when you're out taking your daily uh, exercise. But you need to be one that is looking to the welfare of others. Amen. I just release that even as a commissioning upon you. Now, timing wise, because I told you I was coming to you as a Issachar prophet today. And I know you may, it may sound like I'm all over the place today, but then I'm going to go back and forth, entering different topics back and forth. And I apologize for that. But, but when you write things down as bullet points from God, sometimes there's just not that, that, that smoothness. But between now or what even started at Passover, going to Pentecost, there is an intensity to intercede. And one of the things that I want, to say to you it's not just for the virus and it's not just for the economic pressure uh, that we're praying in uh, uh, at this time but I believe that we have had a Passover we haven't had the full manifestation of it but I believe that you're going to continue to see the numbers of deaths go down you're going to continue to see the numbers of those that have been diagnosed with the virus uh, come down and I believe that the turning is already there and so uh, but what so the Passover has happened but when you have a Passover the purpose of the Passover what saved lives but it had a secondary purpose that we'll get into in a little bit but that secondary purpose was a deliverance and then after the deliverance there was a crossover so uh, repeat after me. I'm going to go all the way from uh, uh, Passover to deliverance to crossover. Amen. And we agree with you in that. So between now and Pentecost, we need to be uh, uh, in intercession, not just for the Passover, that we are saved and that we're still alive. We still are praying for all of those that are hurting, all of those that are affected. We release healing to you. We release comfort to you. We release protection to you right now in, in the name of Jesus. But this is also an incredibly preparatory time. So do not miss this uh, as well. And I've spoke before, but I'm going to say it again. I feel like that in the area of timing, the Lord still said that we were going from the winds of March to the showers of April and to the May flowers. And I believe that you are going to see at the end of April, regardless what little things have to be swept up, 
uh, with the virus, you're going, you're going to be able to say, uh, you're going to be able to look at it in your rear view mirror. And I believe the Spirit of God is doing that. Our spring is going to cause us to be able to spring into action, not stay in areas of lockdown. Now, th I, I spoke to my husband and I told him there's just been an anthem singing in my spirit uh, uh, for days. And I think it's a Whitney Houston song, and I can't sing, so I can't sing it to you. But I believe that this is something that is causing us to be positioned and aligned, even for what's taking place in the next two and three weeks that the Spirit of God has for us. And I don't know if you've ever heard the song by Whitney Houston, but I'm only going to give you the chorus. And, the, and so the anthem that God is saying, this is, this is your marching song. This is what's going to cause you to be able to go forward. Uh, at this at this time and Whitney Houston sings and she says bring me a higher love bring me a higher love bring me a higher love where's the higher love I keep thinking of father right now in the name of Jesus we declare over your people we declare over your earth we declare at this time from Passover uh, to cross over father from Passover to Pentecost from Passover to deliverance father right now what you're doing in our our lives is you're bringing us into a higher love for you a higher ability to receive your love a higher love for our neighbors and you're asking who are our neighbors and we're beginning to realize uh, that it's much broader and we have a higher level of influence for a higher level of love a new expectation of what you're going to do in the name of Jesus I just even release that to you go get on your computers and play that that chorus uh, for yourself and let it become an anthem uh, in your soul but also I'm going to use a word that a lot of people don't like and it's the word pause as we've been in quarantine the Spirit of God has been saying there is a pause there is a Selah there is a uh, rest at this moment and there is a stillness so be still and know that I am God and I always say you know yes you know I agree with that I said I am a workaholic but with a bridal paradigm and that means I'm, I'm doing it from the right place um, but but I am definitely a driven woman and so this is a time that I have had to really regroup in my spirit not that I haven't been busy we've been doing do so many international and national uh, prophetic roundtables around the world at this time but what you need to know there was a pause a pause for a regrouping a pause so that you could uh, do all the things that you told God you were going to do if you had more time but I believe one of the greatest parts of this pause is that you would remember who you are. You are the church, not the building is the church. And I believe that the healing of the nations is coming from the healing of the families. And so let me make it personal. I believe the healing of your nation is coming from the healing of your family. I believe the healing of the nations is coming from the healings, healing of families. And also it's a putting families back into order and so whether you feel like you're in the pause moment preparing for the deliverance and the uh, crossover wherever you feel like you are make this a priority because this is one of those things that the Holy Spirit is going to go check check yes they've worked on the healing of the families they've taken personal pro uh, responsibility as priests of their own family to lead their own family in worship to lead their own family in prayer I'll touch on that a little bit more uh, later but I also want to say this because people are going but the virus is still here Sharon let me say this I am NOT a conspiracist person that is not that's not who I am but I am going to uh, prophesy over China and the virus right now for three nights I've had to battle with a multi head red dragon uh, in my dreams and I know this is representing China and I believe that we are going to have to deal with this over this time of Passover to Pentecost at this time that that we are going to have to uh, deal with it we can't just be a people of blame even though there's probably blame to lay but we have to remember that what 
the virus is doing, you know, because God's taking what the enemy meant for our harm. He's taking a natural virus that the enemy has attached his plans to because it has the ability to kill and destroy. He's turning it for our good and he is using it for our benefit that he might make an open show of the enemy. And so uh, it's going to be a great time of dealing with China and the virus even during this time. So don't, don't let that go because it, we are being positioned for a great harvest that I believe has already begun. And we're going to even uh, before summer is fully over, we are going to have some strong testimonies and of that. But it's going to look different than some of the harvests that we've received in times past. So uh, uh, we want to commission you. The Bible says that those that win souls are wise. So don't just look for some evangelist or somebody that has rented a stadium. It's you. Right where you are with the people of influence that you have. And we're going to move into that area. But still speaking about uh, China and the, and the virus, uh, we have to realize that you and I are going to have to step into place and advise our government. Now, all of us can't step in to an office and advise them, even if we could find them or had access to them. And so you send that prophetic word, you send that direction, or you get to those people that you know have an influence to be able to do that. Because I believe as a church, we've got to step in, particularly with government, and we've got to help them deal and I don't understand why, but, uh, but I, because we prophesy in part, we have to help them deal with not only our entry uh, uh, back into uh, our world out of lockdown, but I believe we've got to help them deal with where the viruses come from. And you, anybody that knows me the most, I do not like conspiratorial things. I understand cause and effect. And I realize people like to blame. And that's why I, I always am very cautious about conspiratorial things. But I believe that the Spirit of God uh, is saying that in China, there were accidental leaks uh, of this virus, but that there has been purposeful cover-ups. And I believe that the ones that had the accidental leaks and the one that has the act, accidental cover-ups they may not even know of one another and so I believe as a church where before we would have thought no no we can't say that that's conspiratorial and we're taking our eyes off of Christ now we can say that word a lab in China was a, the place of release even of this uh, a pandemic that is new and there is going to be a cause and effect upon them even as we're praying for China's great revival we want a restructuring in their nation we want the secrecy the deception we want the people that have disappeared no longer to be the future that people can just disappear and nobody do anything about it but there has been a real venom that has come out uh, I believe from that Chinese dragon and so let me speak to you a little bit about uh, oh maybe we better pray right now father right now in the name of Jesus father we are not speaking about Chinese people father we are not speaking about uh, a change or a curse over a nation we are not speaking about any of those things father we know that China is supposed to be one of the first revival nations that there is and you are going to bring forth this exposure and that there might have to be real change real change for them father that they would be released for their crossover governmentally structurally media wise father all right now in the name of jesus and even in the area of human rights issues father that they would have their crossover father we bless china right now now in the area of timing an overview earlier i would say maybe the end of uh, february 1st of march you know, the Lord spoke to me of how we were going from outbreak to outpouring. We cannot forget about that because if you keep our minds set on the outbreak, the virus or the outbreak of that economic uh, uh, destabilization, then all we're saying is God heal that, heal that. And God says that he will take that which is meant for our harm, turn it to our good. And he said outbreak to outpouring. So Father, right now we connect right now 
to this virus, to the prayer time that your people have had isolated in their homes. Father, to the fasting times that we have had. Father, to the times where we have cried out to you, that we have repented, that we have asked you to heal our land, all of those things. Father, right now we connect to those things and we say we do not just connect the outbreak. Now we connect the outpouring to that as well, that it will not be postponed. In the name of Jesus. Now, I know that all of us have been praying, been praying 2 Chronicles 4, 7. Heal our land. We repent God. And I believe we've done this because we recognize uh, that uh, this virus was, the enemy is using it to try to distract and delay a revival. And we're not going to let that happen. But of course, we know that you are praying protection over your family too. And over the nations with your Psalm 91. This plague will not come uh, near our homes. But when the Lord spoke to me uh, uh, earlier in the year and said we're going from contagious to catalyst, again, what we have to do is we cannot just keep our sight upon the contagious stuff. We have got to get our sight upon the catalyst because God's having you make preparation. What are you going to do? When the doors of your home are opened up. What are you going to do when you are back in the midst of people? You have been changed. You are not the same person that you were before. And this is an influence time for the church. You remember you are the church. And we've got to rise up. And I actually believe some of you. Uh, you've not yet sought even contact with uh, the leaders of your nations. And praying for solutions. But you still have the time for that. This is your time. And I believe God's given you the power, the authority, revelation, and clarity so that you can step into your place. Now, when the Lord originally showed me that, that we were going from the contagious to the catalyst, from, the, from uh, sickness to revival, uh, from, from outbreak to outpouring, when he began to show me that, he showed me that it was a two-prong effect. And I believe that in the area of the two prong, he said, first, it's going to be the areas of the contagious, and then it will be the area of economic, uh, fear of economic loss, of greater economic loss, and the destabilization of economies. And we know that now because we have the ability to look back and say, that's exactly what has happened. But this is what history is going to do. This is a line in history, and I'll touch more on that in a moment. But you need to know that because you're living in a season that nobody's ever lived before. This is going to be one of those before and after moments. And people are going to mark history by saying, oh, no, that was before the pandemic. And no, that was after the pandemic. But I also felt like that people are going to also recognize this is a, a time of great change and I'm going to speak to you about some of those areas of change because it says the Issachar prophets not only knew the times but they knew what to do during those times and I think that I'm going to probably go over this for the next two weeks I'm sure there'll be more revelation so the Lord wants us to legislate for our world he wants us to legislate for our regions don't forget the cities that we already uh, talked about and so what are we legislating uh, uh, for them father we are uh, first of all, we are legislating spiritual sight. And even as Saul on the road to Damascus saw a great light, was thrown from his horse. Father, that when his sight was restored to him, he saw what he could not see before. Father, that the religious stuff had fallen. The wrong passions and focus had fallen. And there was a clarity of how to love you and to partner with you. And there was an empowerment given to him, even in a greater way for influence. Father, we legislate this for the world. We legislate this for our regions, nations, and cities. Father, right now, and Father, for your church, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, during the pause that we have, the pause is, is the, the lockdown. Psalms 46.10 says, Be still, know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the whole earth. What's going on right now is a global thing. But harvest is in preparation. There's a preparation for outpouring 
during this time when God says be still and know that I'm God there's something going on in the inside of you you're getting full you're going to overflow you're going to impact others in ways that you have it before now why does God say until Pentecost I believe it's going to be something that goes way beyond Pentecost I just see we'll be able to see a release at that point because that was a fresh breath time of God in the upper room did you know in the upper room they were in quarantine they were hidden in that place after uh, uh, Jesus had been uh, crucified and they were in quarantine and they were in quarantine longer than you and I have been in quarantine and then that fresh breath of God came there is a fresh breath of God coming to us and he's about to do something across the nations and if they could stay in that upper room not knowing how long they were going to be there and pray and they got the results that still changing the world can we do that and I would like you to say wherever you are and say uh, God I can with your help I can with your help Lord amen amen I want to share with you uh, um, I won't call it a vision but it was definitely a, a picture in my spirit yesterday morning as I was awaking and I told my uh, my 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 husband and uh, I don't know I know this is a new generation but we used to have like on uh, programs and stuff where they would show a red phone and a red phone meant an emergency phone where presidents could talk to other presidents prime ministers could talk to other prime ministers those were only used in cases of emergencies and I saw this red phone and it was ringing and ringing and ringing and nobody answered it and then I knew that I knew that just the phone call itself not what was said was the signal and this is what the signal was there were two buttons like this and I knew it was the hands of God but it was also the hands of the church and as that was ringing that was our signal to move past the pause button that our finger was on and hit the reset button that that uh, causes everything to be reset and I believe the phone is ringing and again I want to share with you some things that you do during the pause so you're not behind any good thing even as we're hitting this reset because you may need some catch-up time and again I think one of the keys is especially for the family get that family thing in order be the priest of your household minister to everybody whether they want to be ministered to or not this is a time remember nations cannot be changed unless your families are being changed economies cannot be healthy unless there is healthy uh, families but also another thing during that pause that we're supposed to learn is just some extravagant love of God and kindness to, to that we're to recognize hurting people around about us and that there's a new boldness that's coming that we realize that we are able ministers but also there's something else that's happened on the inside of you during this pause time that you need to be aware of and let it have its finished work there has been a trial of our faith which the Bible says is more precious than gold I just want to release that to you father that none of what this these people have gone through is worthless <clears throat> every bit of it father is more precious than gold it is so valuable father they could not have even got here on their own so we thank you now that you have taken what the enemy has meant for wrong for our, our harm and we release it for the good of us our families father our, our ministries our, our uh, workplaces father our cities our nations and the nations of the earth and father we just say God uh, let it come forth more precious than gold Wow, 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 isn't that powerful? We will continue that message tomorrow. It is so impactful. There's just so much to take in and meditate on there. So we'll come back to that one tomorrow. Thank you, Dr. Sharon Stone. That is just incredible. So now for some music, the soundtrack of my lockdown, Ryan Gilpin. I just want to play you one of his beautiful songs called Surrender. And uh, let's just enjoy it. Stay connected to Ryan. Draw from his beautiful worship ministry. May inspire you to enjoy God's presence deeply and then uh, after that I'll tell you about the tribe if you want to come and join our online learning community.
Well, I hope tonight God has encouraged you or touched your life in some way. Please leave a comment or email us. We'd love to hear from you if you've been encouraged by these broadcasts. There is a free album waiting for you to download if you sign up to our e-news. And now if you stick around, I'm going to tell you about the tribe, our online learning community. And if you want to come and get involved in that and get connected and stay connected to us in the future, then uh, join our tribe. Hi, I'm Jared Kuba. I want to tell you about The Tribe. The Tribe is our global online learning community made up of uh, believers, leaders, pastors, influencers, artists, all devoted to growing in God together. We're passionate about the things of the Spirit, growing in prophecy, miracles, signs, wonders. We're, We're passionate about revival and the reformation of society, God doing something that will transform the world around about us. And we're passionate about great leadership, doing things with skill and integrity that, again, and will impact the world around about us. There's three tiers to the tribe. The basic level is learn, and that's access to our growing library, over 400 units of video, audio, and e-courses to grow you in your faith and walk with God. There's a private Facebook group, an Instagram group, where you can interact with others and with us in a more live way. Tier two is called lead, and it's our global leadership tribe, where we add a lot more leadership content. As soon as you join, you get four of my books on leadership and how to grow in the area of leadership and every book that we write during your membership you will get for free sent to you as an ebook. And then that tier has its own private Facebook group and Instagram group where you can connect with others that are growing in the same journey. Tier three is an extension of tier two, really. It's called Lead Plus, and it's where you can take your whole team up to 10 people and have them join under one membership so you're all learning and growing together. I want to invite you to join us on this journey. Join us in the Facebook group, the Instagram group, where we can interact together and then enjoy the massive amount of teaching on the tribe zone that could absolutely transform your ministry. Isn't it wonderful that we can connect around the world like this now with the power of the internet? Let's use it for good and let's walk together and grow together in the things of God.